Camp Petro was actually started all throughout the, the camps where you've seen around the golf course, the, uh, the old airfield, those were all tent cities. They started with Camp Alpha. So Camp X-Ray, just going uh, alphanumeric, came right up to here. So they come here, 50,000. The analogy I always use is, uh, you guys have been on the island a couple of days, but if you go to the gym at r roughly five o'clock on Monday, and there's only 8,000 people here, can you imagine if there was 50,000? We'd have to install like little number pools to get on the bench and everything. <laughs> So, 96 is closed down, pretty much everybody was, was sent home. There are still some, some Cuban refugees, so to speak, that are on the other side of the island, migrants, but they're over there, not very many. Uh, fast forward, September 11th happens. Joint Task Force 160 is stood up. When it stood up, um, roughly December of 2001, they, they contacted Colonel Terry Carrico out of Fort Hood. He had 10 days to come down here. So to kind of give you all a backstory, soldiers when they come in now, they get about 14 days to transition. He got contacted right after Christmas, had 10 days, and he was on the island and in charge of, of this camp. Six days later, the first American flag flew on January 11th. Six days after that, the International Committee of the Red Cross came in and they started interviewing detainees. So where your van came in, there was two buses came in each having 20 detainees, so the first 40 detainees took the same route that we just took right into here. This is what's called a vehicle sally port. Van come in here, this is where they inspect it all, and then it moved on. The building to my left was actually the commander's office at the time. So, so Sergeant Major can attest now that Colonel Gabovics would be in this office. Correct. Yeah, that, that probably not happened. <laughs> so we've definitely upgraded. So this was the commander's office. Bus would pull here, and if you'll follow me, I'll show you where they, they pulled up and offloaded. What do you think about the day's camp extra? Um, so all the different camps, so like I was saying, when they first started the actual sea signal, over on the golf course was Camp Alpha. Mm -hmm. So all the camps are Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, all the way up to X-Ray. Okay. So that's just the naming convention they just used. Just the naming convention. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> so the initial push for here, though, was certain camps had all, all the women, all the men, families, minors. This was what housed the criminal element. Okay. So anybody that was, you know, troublemaker, so forth, came here. So during that time, there was only 60 of the refugees here. Okay. That That is kind of important because, did y'all see any tent cities over at the golf course or anything? Mm -hmm. Because with 50,000 people, they were so used that they just pretty much dilapidated. They kind of bulldozed them off. Okay. But this wasn't used very much for that. So that's why, <coughs> excuse me, when Donald Rumsfeld came down here as the Secretary of uh, mm -hmm. Defense, he said, legally, this is the, the best, worst place we could put detainees. Wow. And that's how this was selected. So they actually expanded it then. So, but bus pulls up here. First 20 detainees come off. They still had the masks on. They still had their earmuffs on. They came off here. This is where they actually took the blindfolds off, the earmuffs off, moved into the left, and they did in processing. So the in process consisted of they had um, a mobile x ray machine. They would also do ID bracelets, identify them, log all their information, and then they escort from here to those lavish showers. Right? <laughs> lavish, lavish. So, so this is a multi-purpose yard, completely different the way we do things today. So this is 15 years in the future. They would take them over here, shower them after they had processed them, cleaned up, and ready. This is where the orange jumpsuits came from. They get them in there. So this was also the recreation yard. So the detainees. So 
I always stop the groups right here because even though you're you're standing in part of history right now, you don't know it. You're standing even in a more more historic site. So if you look behind you, those gates, and imagine those close. We have what's called combat cameras. So combat cameras. This is where the picture was taken that, that everybody called the pumpkin patch. So if you've ever seen a picture of Guantanamo Bay, this is the picture you usually see. You had everybody was down through here on their like on sitting Indian style and three guards. Now, common MP practice, you have them set like that when they're and okay. you're outnumbered. And the reason being is how many of you ever set Indian style? What happens? Your feet fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So for an MP, that gives us a three to five second reaction time to where if one of them was to start a riot, we could actually hold them down. Mm -hmm. So so with that being said, though, this picture was taken. Now, I'm a walking dead buff. So grass actually <laughs> got cut about five years ago. Walking dead's been on for seven to eight years now. They go through a subdivision, the grass is manicured. Yep. This is more <laughs> what it really be. <laughs> this was all graveled, all cleaned up. You had them along both sides. You had the guys in the middle. So they took the picture there. Um, I forgot what I was going to tell you about it now. Lost my train of thought. Walking dead got you. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Man. <laughs> it's a soap opera now, though. I'm not yeah, even talk about totally that. Totally. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Agree. Totally, totally yeah. terrible. Oh, I know what it was. So, but moving on there, so I try to debunk some media stuff because I also do media. That's another one of our tenants that come in here. Well, as late as June of 2015, that picture that I just described to you was displayed in a media source and the caption still read current operations of Guantanamo Bay. Mm. So it's one of those things where you have to sometimes read between the lines because I will tell you now my joking part is I got here and a week later I take a picture of me holding a starfish and sending my wife. She's like, whoa, pause button. I thought you were deployed. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, well we can't take pictures at work. So now me and my NCO will come out here and sit at a desk, mm -hmm. and take pictures, and be like, hey, it's a tough day at work. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> you have to adapt and overcome. <laughs> <laughs> Statistical data here. So all the cells are, are alike. There's 340 cells total. The max that ever was here was 300. So we only had 300 here. Another common MP practice. You don't always go to capacity in case you've got to rotate, mm -hmm. separate, you know, segregate. So mark differences you'll see from this to this one i'll tell you in a second they had basic issue items two buckets one gallon buckets so one was fresh water one was for emergencies they had a sleeping pads kind of like a yoga mat that they would sleep on two towels and then like your uh, toothbrush toothpaste etc so this is where the, the term splashing was kind of coined what that is is they would take and mix stuff like urine and and crap and milk and all that stuff in a bucket call the guard force over you can see it's chain link fence that would splash the guard force oh. <laughs> the way we adapted and overcome was we took one bucket away anything but fresh water it got pulled and then we put in these gravity pipes now some of the tours by this point i've decided if i like you or not and i don't say that's gravity pipes for urination i say that's how they communicated and if you want to try it out one can talk on this end and the other can go to that end you know like we used to talk mm -hmm. in the cans mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I'm going to pick it up. <laughs> but no, that was actually a urination system, and that, that kind of cut down on the splashing on our guard force. Because you can imagine being in this uniform, but this isn't the uniform they wore. They'd have this plus all that protective gear on out here. And this is winter for getting them. So. They do that today. They still get splashed. I have yeah. splash coins. A soldier gets splashed with pieces. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, wow. Yeah. It's Whoa. <laughs> How many people have been in this work on? So the, the first tier was, was two MP companies, so you got a soldier lab that was about 200 soldiers. Yeah. So the Marines had a Marine company, so I know that they may all get the external security. So okay. they all watch the outside. Okay. The Army's Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Want me, yo? Put your ear up to that uh, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> communication. That communication about it. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, get you one, man. So they, so these cells are eight yeah. by eight, which is like 64 square feet. So like you're saying about the current, like the, the um, penitentiary systems now. So the American uh, Correction Center deems that for, for the United States, we only have to provide 35 square feet. So even in these conditions, we were giving them almost twice what we had. Wow. Been. Man. It's kind of amazing to think. Remember, all they had was a yoga mat to sleep on. They were here in the same time. Fifteen years ago today, they were here. So they were kind of here from January. They, they rolled out early or early April. So what they did is they would take, it looks kind of like a, a white tarp, and they'd put around the, the sides where the sun was on for inclement weather because, I mean, the sun beats down. So here's your showers. They're kind of a gravity-fed system you can see over here. Of course, we have females in the MP Corps. So with that being said, they complained about it. They would take the same type ponchos or tarps and they would put around and they would cover the detainees from shoulder to knee. So that's what they would do. So they'd ask them over one at a time to the showers, cover, let them shower, and bring them back. So one, one detainee per each one of them. I tell everybody, I'm just an old country boy from Tennessee, that these look like dog runners. Yep. Yeah. But now, it, it, the amazing thing is if you had the ability to see the camps that they're currently in, so our major can attest, Daylight and dark. This would be like the Motel Six, and now they're in the Marriott Five Star. Mm -hmm. They get to see the outside. Yeah. Is there something going on today they couldn't go in? Okay. So you, you, I mean, and that that'll be enough to make the analogy right there of how different it is. I'm a firm believer that all the troopers we bring down here should have to come see this because it's human nature to complain. I'm a positive thinker, but it's human nature to complain about stuff. If they saw this, can you imagine working here 12 hours on, 12 hours off? We actually have a major that's here in the 96 right now that was. Four, which means he was enlisted as a guard here. Military always brings you in the middle of the night, so you'll roll into your housing middle of the night. So they were on a bus, he moved in here. I'll show you where they live later. Uh, they went to move to Camp Delta three months later. It's the first time he saw that there was a McDonald's right down the street. Wow. But now, if you go Wi Fi, which is our Wi Fi here, goes out for more than three days, it's bad. T <laughs> 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 Mobile's down. Do they get to eat? So here is a little less than what it is now, but they, I'll show you the defects on their side. And they, so of course, pork is not in there for the Muslim faith, so they don't have anything for them. So a lot of fish, a lot of chicken. It, it's almost like a, a meat and three is what it would equate to every day. So they bring them in here. It wasn't in clamshells. So here you can see you, you've got two different slots. So what was that? So what's the bottom one for? So remember again, three point harness, right? Me as a guard force yeah, stay protected. I can put my hands out. Yeah. He can put those in there, then reach in there and do the feet, come out, attach it to your waist, and that's how they move them. And for access to slide feet trays. Always feet, always hands first. Yeah. They had a lot of suicides. Not not here. So the big thing that happened here was the thing that you you kind of know about or heard about was the hunger strike. This is where that hunger strike started, and that was in February leading up to March. So so that was a big thing here where all of them said, you know, we're going to go hunger strike and not eat. But that's when I show you medical, I'll kind of turn the switch in on this a little bit. Wow. So really significant about this, this actual sally port was in December. I go home for leave and my NCO is actually doing the tour. He, he's on the head. A couple of the young ladies run up to him like, hey, 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 there's a couple of little snakes back here. So he comes back to check it out. He walks up right here, sees the little snakes kind of go off, kind of steps over a log and realizes that the log is not a log. It's a it's a 12-foot rainbow boa. Oh, yeah. great. So, yep. so, so they took him and drug him back in there by his tail, walked out. He came right back out there, but he's like, hey, I was just going to be part of the tour, you know? <laughs> yeah. So they actually, we got pictures. They picked him up and carried him off and set him down. Now, have y'all seen banana rats since you've been here yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, come on up here with me. Here's how they got their name right there. They're called banana rats because their, their droppings look like little bananas, okay? Oh, okay. First four months we're here, this place was covered with banana rat droppings. My boa moved in, banana rats moved out. Took for, care of business. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a buffet. Yeah. So that's how they got oh, the name. Yeah. It's the same as a, a gopher rat. They're like a beaver with a rat's tail yeah. back on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I kind of wondered where that name came from. I thought they just tried to give it a cute name. But they were like monkeys. They just ate the meat. Oh, well. I was wrong there. Yes, sir. Love it. I didn't come up with a banana boat, man. I'm a political refugee from Cuba. <laughs> And they don't even catch it. They don't, they don't, but they, out of spite, they don't catch it. They don't want to Could be what we were talking about. That was ironic. You know what I mean? I yeah. Like, that's kind of weird that they were. The whole thing was weird. With their relationship. I don't know. I guess you can so see it. I, I, I know. I'm just saying. Make sure you watch. No critics about it. <laughs> Yeah, something's gonna do it. Yeah. These mountains are crazy, dude. Crazy. 